Hey everyone, welcome back uh, to Jeremy Siegel Photography. My name is Jeremy, and today we're going to be taking a look at the post-processing I did on one of the images in my library. In fact, it's the one that you see right here. I love black and white images. There's something about black and white. It, they kind of almost look like a slide film or like a slide negative, like a transparency. Uh, something with, to do with the contrast gives a real depth to the image. And that goes for this one as well. Drama in the sky, lovely clouds, and it really pulls you in. So actually this image, I'll start from the beginning, started off as this image. Now this was taken in Yokohama about three years ago in the summertime and there's a river I forgot which river that runs through the center the station is off to the right and this is the Minatomirai district which translates to kind of future town Minatomirai 21 so 21st century it's a entire development almost exclusively owned by the Mitsubishi Corporation so they're a mafia they own everything anyway uh, I took this from across the water uh, on a little bluff, a little ridge, and there's actually a park where my tripod, where I'm standing, there's a, a ridge that uh, a lot of photographers usually uh, use as a place to take pictures. Uh, so, this image is of the, what is this, the south facing side of the view? North, north, sorry, north. So, if you're looking this way behind me, behind the camera that you obviously can't see in this image, but if you're taking this photo from this way, my back is facing Tokyo. So this is facing south, pointing north. Confusing. Anyway, uh, this is of the Fuji Xerox building, and this is landmark tower right here. And this is a big cell tower. I really like the shape. Oh yeah, and this is where the Yokohama FC Marinos play. This is the, I think, I'm not a football soccer fan, so don't get angry, anyone that's listening. Anyway, this is a soccer stadium. And I could see potential when I was taking this photograph. When I was making the shot, there's definitely some potential because of all the drama in the clouds. Uh, really cool. This is unprocessed. This is what it looked like out of the camera. Uh, shot in raw, so obviously very, very flat. And the curve, there's always no curve in the, uh, in the levels and curves. It comes out completely flat, and that's just a, a way that the processor, the chip in the camera, uh, and the, the, the CPU basically, whatever you call it, deals with capturing raw. So I captured all the data, it's kind of flat, and also there are some distractions. So photography is, to me at least, in architectural shots and landscape, it's, it's a simplification. You're removing some elements, basically. So these, these metal poles are very distracting, as is the grass. Uh, everything in the bottom here is quite distracting. So this is done in Lightroom. Uh, also, oopsies, my sensor needs cleaning spots here. If you go through, there's another spot you can see here. And I'll give you a tip on oopsies, how to deal with spots and how to pick them out and get rid of them. So what you do is you go to the develop module, and this is actually a trick uh, that the Kelby Media guys, so Matt K and Scott Kelby, showed maybe two years ago on one of their video posts, and recently the guys at slrlounge.com did the same thing, and it's really clever and very simple solution. So you go to, over here to the Tone Curve panel, and I have a preset called Spot Removal 2. Now originally, the guys at Kelby, what they did was they made a very exaggerated reverse S-curve. I guess it's an N. You make an N with these. So you pull this up, 
you pull it down till it becomes an N, and this gives reverse contrast. It kind of inverts all the colors, so you can kind of see where all the spots are. Now the guys at SLR, uh, SL, I can't speak, SLR Lounge, they made a video about something like this, where it's much more exaggerated shape, and what it does is completely makes the colors go all wonky, but it makes all of these stand out. Now I've heard Lightroom 5 has a option. It has some kind of built-in filter that already does this because perhaps the engineers at Adobe realized that people were having to do this on their own and make their own solution, so they included it in the new update. Anyway, I'm still on Lightroom for the the latest release of four so i made one it's quite simple i'll make a link to all the videos that describe how to make these and go into more detail anyway so first step i always do with my images is i got rid of the spots so using this so it's quite simple i would just go to my spot removal tool and remove all of these spots here for example something like that like that like that and go through all of that and be sure to check everywhere so there's a spot here this is very helpful this tone curve thing is really really helpful so i'm just gonna reset that to linear and go back to my original so you have this one here this was the original took away the spots basic adjustments in lightroom so i cropped it this next image here is the crop version, and it's brighter, brighten things up, open up the shadows, as you can see, comparatively much brighter here, and brought in some of the detail with a little bit of contrast and saturation in the clouds here. Now for me, the clouds are what made this image, and when I was making the photograph, I could already see in my mind that it was going to be a black and white. I can already see that it's going to be monochrome. Now. These guys, these things right down here, these metal distractions, these poles, we gotta get rid of these. And also, I guess this little twig or little piece of foliage, as they say, foliage, foliage. I uh, gotta get rid of that. So this was the intermediary step, and I round tripped it into Photoshop Elements, and I came back ended up with this. So now let's go over to Elements and I'll show you what I did fully, the full process to go from this to this to this all the way back into Lightroom. So let's go over to Elements. All right, so here we are in Elements, uh, Photoshop Elements. I haven't subscribed to the Adobe Cloud yet, but I'll be doing that soon. So for now, we're still in Elements. Anywho. Uh, first step was to get rid of these distractions here and anything else I find distracting in the sky. I don't think I did much in the sky. So as you can see here in the layers, many different layers. One of the negative drawbacks about elements is you cannot create layer groups, which sucks. So you have to live with making a billion layers. That's right, a billion layers. Billion. Okay, anyway. Uh, starting off with this, this was the previous shot that you saw in Lightroom and just kind of brought it into Elements to do some of the more heavy lifting. So what we did here, I take a minute after I bring it in, I just kind of take a few minutes or maybe 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, and just kind of see where I want to take the image, uh, what I want to do with it. I know it's going to be black and white, but obviously, first off, these things here got to go all these here these gotta go for sure so all i did was create one two three four four blank layers and used content aware fill pretty simple got rid of this so as you can see here we'll just move in a little bit this was the first one boom I'm a bit of a control freak. I could have made one layer and got rid of all these, but you know, I'm just kind of a control freak like that. I want to make sure everything is perfect. So whatever, to each their own. Horses for courses, as they say. Got rid of this one, got rid of this one, those two, and got rid of this one. Now, some people might be saying, 
I should have manually blended each one on the bottom, but to be honest, unless I had told you that there had been these here in the beginning, unless you had seen the before and after shot, I doubt anyone not looking with a fine tooth comb with a hyper microscope would have noticed these on the bottom. Uh, because who really cares about the water? No one's going to look. Even if you print it out, if you press your nose against the print, you might see some pixelation or some, some irregularities in the pattern. But really, guys, really, like, it does the job. So I'm quite happy, and it did the job quite well. Those are gone, and that's why the tool was created to make my life easy and that was easy so they're gone and what did i do next i believe that i just merged all the layers together so all of these one two three four five six previous were made into a new layer and that's what you have to do instead of making a, a group so you just kind of bring all these into this one with the previous changes, making a new one that's a compilation of all of them, but keeping all the changes before. So next, moved into Silver FX Pro. Now I'll have a link to all the plugins that I used and the Nick software suite. So we can see here that the sky looks really, really nice, but there's much more detail that we can pull out of the sky. Uh, that your camera captures and you can kind of bring out and people say massage massage the pixels or punish those pixels you bend them to your will as trey ratcliffe would say so you can see here this and the this shape here look very very dark there's going to be a nice contrast bringing those in to silver silver effects so that's what i did originally brought those into silver effects pro 2. so first round i round tripped them first time from this into this a little bit flat still but just a basic conversion and I was right with all of these, and more stuff over here, lovely darkness here, and the tone of this building, how it's darker, has great contrast when compared to this building, which is white. And I noticed that immediately, especially also the tower and the fact that this is white and this is brighter so good black and white has good contrast contrast is key in uh, monochrome imagery you need almost one point that's completely black and another point that's completely white it can be the smallest little thing but that's what makes an image uh, pop a bit more rather than have everything be completely flat even though it's black and white it can still look flat because you don't have that white point and that black point, but there's a lot of great contrast going on here. And this is dark, obviously. This well, doesn't this looks like a mess, doesn't it? This building is quite dark, and these buildings are kind of neutral here. So this is the first round. I brought that into Silver FX Pro 2. So from here to here. Let's get rid of these. Alright. So after that. I actually threw this into Color Effects Pro, uh, which brought out some tonal contrast. I used the tonal contrast and the detail extractor, which are two of my favorite filters, and I used that selectively only up here. Now let's take a look at this. Let's focus up here for a moment, and let's go back and forth. So from that to that. One more time, from that to that. And it also brings out some nice texture over here, little smiley face. Yay, texture. We love texture in the sky. But also, you got to be careful, because if you make things a bit too crunchy, if you push the camera file too far with some of the detail extractors, you end up with grain as you can see there's grain especially in the 
the darker contrast areas. So we're sad because there's grain. So how do we fix this? I actually moved into Define, which was another of the NIC plugins, and that removes a lot of graininess. It removes a lot of noise. It's a very excellent uh, noise reduction tool. So, so far, we've gone from this to this. Now, I thought I would need a little bit more burning and dodging, some selective adjustments. So I created a burn and dodge layer. New layer, 50% gray, fill it, and change the blend mode to overlay. And selectively burned and dodged some of this stuff. So you wouldn't notice it, some of these specific areas, unless I told you once again. But if we take a look here, this is on and this is off. This is on and off. Just some small little things, but you know, it devils in the details. So I really like to bring out more, more contrast on the building here. Uh, what, what else did we do? So over here. So I made that darker. I lightened up this building here. I brightened up this area here. And I think all of this hit this white line running across, I brightened up completely. So just a subtle thing, but I think it really adds and draws attention to the image and to specific points in the image that you want the viewer and where you want to draw their eye. Then finally, back into Silver Effects Pro, and I added a little bit of a color shift. I shifted it to a little bit of gold, like sepia, to add a little bit more depth, which I really enjoy. I like doing that with my monochrome images. Just straight monochrome is nice, but even if there's a slight touch of color, imperceptibly, I think it adds something to the image. And I also added a slight vignette. There we are, to kind of push the viewer back more into the center. So I really like the way that this turned out. And after doing this, I put this back into Lightroom for some final adjustments. So let's go back to Lightroom and check that out. So here we are back in Lightroom. All I did once finishing those adjustments in Photoshop, in Elements, I all I really had to do was bring it back into here and as you can see, boost the contrast to about 63, adds a little bit more crunchiness. Crunchiness, doesn't that sound nice? Anyway, adds a bit more contrast to the image, and I didn't really do much else. I think I did a little bit of denoising up here once again with the adjustment brush, and that's about it. So all in all, I think it's a very nice image. If we can quickly review going from this to this, cropped, out into Photoshop, back into Lightroom, finally ending up with this. And I'm very happy with how this shot turned out. Uh, I think I'm gonna print this on a large, as a large metal print. I think as a metallic print, it would come out quite nicely. And I just, I'm very, very pleased with how this turned out. And it really conveys the feeling of that day, uh, cloudy, overcast, and these buildings in real life, these things are huge. That cell tower is, is ridiculously tall, and the Fuji Xerox building is quite big, and the design is very interesting as well. So when you're standing there, you kind of get this feeling in your mind, this is this is how I, I this is how I felt when I was standing there. So I like to express that in the processing of my art. And when I show my art and I, I create my art, this is what I like to do, I like to display to the viewer the feeling and hopefully through my my way 
of, of uh, creating a picture and making an image for, for the viewer, I can convey some of that feeling through the technique of processing to the viewer. So once again, this is Jeremy. Uh, you can check out more of my work at jsegelphoto.com or jsegelphoto.com slash blog for the blog. And you can also reach me if you have any questions, send me an email. Uh, feel free to comment on the bottom here of the video or check out the site. And stay tuned for more videos coming up soon. Thanks a lot. Take care.